I think in terms of using um, data in terms of sport, I think it was uh, important to stress uh, before I came in a rugby coach, I had 16 years in business. I worked for Xerox for eight years and ran my own leasing and finance company for eight, eight years before becoming a rugby coach. So um, I was used from the business point of view of looking at facts and figures and data. So when you move into a professional sport, using, using data was just, to me, fairly straightforward. The key thing was finding the company you can actually do it. So one of the first companies I worked with was a company called Prozone, where we really started to analyze data in terms of what was actually happening. And you know, I'd played at a high level, I'd coached at a high level, but never as a professional basis. So for the first time we really started to look at every bit of data you can think of in terms of the, especially the individual players, what they're actually doing during, during the game. So that was kind of quite groundbreaking. And what, what we're trying to do is, is very simply sort of put some real kind of maths and sort of uh, analysis behind what we were just seeing with our, with our eyes. And I think the second thing, which was a really big step forward, so I think there was quite a few coaches kind of doing that, but it's kind of playing around with it. The big step forward was me involving the players, meaning I, I really got the players involved in you know, using just laptop computers, using using IT, and really starting to analyze their own performance. And I think when they, you know, it's like all of us, when, when you're asked to actually analyze your own performance, they take it pretty seriously. So they start to analyze it, and they came up with you know, lots of kind of thoughts, and a lot of preconceptions about what we thought was happening in the game were blown out the window. And that was why it was such an exciting time, because we were, Definitely the first rugby team to actually do this. I think um, sports teams have done it. Um, I was got quite close to Formula One, especially at that time, McLaren, uh, in terms of what they were doing. There's a lot of ideas in terms of all the analysis came came from them. So it was just an exciting time because from the playing's point of view, and I was you know I always kind of see myself as a player. They were coming in and seeing all this new kind of stuff in a way, and um, and they really kind of took hold of it and the rest is kind of history. We started to really kind of change the way we played, really based on what we're finding out through the analysis of the games we were playing in. Well, I think it's moved, uh, I think the the sort of technology uh, analysis, analytics world has moved, moved on tremendously in 20 years. But it's not stopped, this is not going to stop. This is one of the great thing about all this. It's uh, everyone's pushing, pushing, pushing. I think the big the big change currently we used to do um, a lot of uh, analysis, but it was kind of post game. In other words, you'd, you'd get afterwards all the data and we'd kind of analyse things. Now, I mean, what's happening today? There's players with chips in their shirts. You're getting it in real time, so you really are getting it as, as a coach. You see in the stands, you know, coaches sitting with laptops in front of them, and many of what, what what are they doing? Are they kind of watching the telly or what are they actually doing? But they're getting all this data back in real time trying to see if you can make decisions in, in the moment uh, and get those decisions on, onto the field of, field of play. So I think that's the big step forward where it's not just analysis. And then if you think about anal uh, uh, analytics, which to me is prediction, if that's the right the way I look at it, analysis is kind of history and analytics is trying to predict what's happening. And this is why you're trying to use all this, you know, in, turn, in, in, in during the game, this is what we think may be happening next because what we're seeing in, in real, real time and I think the second key point about this is these um, you know players have got um, chips on, on them and you're actually getting physiological data as well as just movement data you're getting physiological data in terms of you know in simple terms you know is, is a player fatiguing is, is he tiring so you may be looking at a player and your, your gut feeling or that of your medical team is saying well we think he's looking tired if that's backed up by the data you may make a decision and conversely um, you must get the wrong way around. I think it's a real danger if you're making decisions on data alone and your eyes are telling you maybe that's not what you're seeing. So it's it's a it's it's a great um, it's a great process we're going to. But I think the secret as always is trying to get the players and all members of your team, whether it be the medical team and the playing staff and coaches, to be totally involved in this. They've got to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it. If they understand that, you tend to get more out of it because a lot of the good ideas will will always come from them. Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure it'd be over 20 years in terms of the, the next big thing in sport, but you know, because it's, it's, it's kind of progressing so quickly. Uh, but the thing currently that's really kind of, uh, you, you see from a, a sporting point of view, but also see from a, a normal business point of view is, is wearable, wearable technology. I mean, players do have chips sewn into their shirts. Um, you're getting all sorts of movement data in terms of say rugby, but you're also getting physiological data. So the wearable technology, but also your, 
you know, you can check on players' sleep habits, you can check on all sorts of their nutrition programs. Um, and also during the actual competition, during game of rugby, or whether when Lewis Hamilton's in his uh, Mercedes Formula One car, you know, we're getting all the amazing data that's kind of wearable in the car, but also the wearable data is now on the athlete or the driver or the rugby player or football player. So you get amazing data back from this. So I think the wearable technology um, is, is, is again the kind of the next big thing, but it's kind of, ha kind of happening already. And again, what I'd stress is, you know, the more the player or the driver in this case understands, you know, what he's doing or why he's doing it, or what information you're getting back, the, the the better I think the information will come through, and the more you'll get the athletes contributing to what, what actually is um, going on at the time. I think first, I'm often asked this about sport and business. I think first of all, um, sports are business. There, there is there is no difference. I mean. This is why I was very lucky before coming in the head coach, I had 18 years in business. And when you take over a rugby team like England, you suddenly realize it's a business. You know, we've got 50 odd players in the room. Uh, it's just a little bit more public, but at the end of the day, you've got to deliver, deliver results. Um, I think the, the kind of, um, uh, what I've found, what I've seen in successful businesses and successful sports teams that I've not only been part of, but I've been lucky enough to go behind the scenes and see other, other teams, is just this huge thirst for knowledge. Uh, I think, we can talk about knowledge and, and know-how. Um, the, the real top teams have this real passion for this, you know, and it's always, you're always pushing, you're always pushing, you're always pushing. You never think you've kind of cracked it. And I know in sport that the, the moment you think, okay, we're, we've, we're kind of here, you're going to come second because your comp competition will always be pushing the actual boundaries. So, you know, when I'm working in business and sport, the, the big thing I'm looking for all the time, you know, and how do you, where does this knowledge come from? How do you capture it? How do you study it? And how, more importantly, how do you implement it? If you think something is going to make a difference, mm -hmm. have you got the uh, capacity and the uh, the opportunity to actually put this in place so it actually happens? You know, I see a lot of people come up with some good ideas, but they kind of actually put it into the the real life business that you know makes you score more tries, win more gold medals, or improve the bottom, you know, improve your bottom line profits. So. I think knowledge is key. And I think the moment you stop being what I call a sponge and a real passion for knowledge, you know, you, you, you're gonna come second, it's time to pack in. Yeah, I think in terms of the emerging technologies in business, what, what we're seeing, you know, almost that exception is just the growth of mobile. I think we all know mobile is, is here to stay. The, the numbers are astonishing. Um, but the technologies now in terms of being on mobile are absolutely huge. And I think from a sporting point of view, it's understanding the importance of learning and how mobile can be so important for anybody, whether you're a small kid or you're a professional athlete, le learning is at the key to it. And what we found is some of the, um, the, the technologies around the mobile device are so, uh, so exciting now. It allows you to, to learn, but also allows you to share information and knowledge with other uh, players and athletes and kind of learn the the right things. So I think you know we've, we're, we're moving on hugely from sort of the the, the, the kind of the classroom, the, the kind of coaching room or the school room to everything is on the on the mobile technology. And the standard of the mobiles now is amazing and the download speed. Um, and it's all about learning. And we've always been big on. I've always been big on this. And you should do it longhand within a team in the team room now because on mobile you can just keep it going all the time. And uh, as I said, the secret of it, if it is a secret to success in sport is getting real engagement with the actual players and coaches involved. If you get that engagement, it's a two-way thing. And I think mobile has really given everybody no excuses now. And the top athletes don't need an excuse, they, they do it anyway. They really want to engage with the athletes and the team about what they're doing and why they're doing it, and mobile is, is key to that. Yeah, I think the world of finance has changed hugely. I must say, my, my background's in finance, I run a small finance and leasing company. And I think when you look at the, the big corporations, historically the finance departments that sort of is always there, they're there to sort of make sure everything runs smoothly. That's hugely changed now. I think the role of finance is really one of your, your leading people in any high performing team. And the whole thing about finance is, is trying to move from analysis about you know what has happened into the, the analytics world where you really are sort of asking the finance people to sort of predict about what may happen in the future using uh, you know, very sophisticated data and analytics. And so the finance people, you, you want to be part of your team because you, 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 you're trying to predict trends in whatever business you're in. 
and you're trying to use the, the finance people who've got you know, incredible, let's face it, incredible intellect and brains to actually really get involved in some of this data and predict what's going to happen, where in the other function of the, within the organization, they may not have that, that skill set. So if I was a young finance people, I'd absolutely want to be at the, the, the sharp end in terms of um, not just sort of doing all the best numbers, but trying to predict and trying to find ways of predicting. And can you, can you help the business in terms of making sure they um, do all the right things based on what you, not, not just gut feeling, which tends to happen, but real um, analysis and um, analytics. And if you feel the kind of a boss of a company, you think this is the way it's going, and it's backed up by real um, sophisticated analytics by your finance people, then they say, okay, let's get on with it. And that's what I'd be asking them to do, but really kind of lead in this and try and, again, think of what your opposition is doing and can we find ways of really helping our whole company to almost predict the, to predict, predict the future. I think that's what um, the finance role is now. I think the, the, the discussion around talent is always uh, very interesting. I have this very simple line that talent alone is not enough. And what, what I mean by that is, um, You've got to have the talent, to be very clear, you, you can't take people off the street and put them into any job unless they've got the talent to do the job. But I, I, the key thing is understanding it's a starting position, not the finishing position. The really talented people will use technology to enhance their talents. And I think technology has a huge role to play. You, you, you will, I, certainly in sport, you can't get there anymore, whether you're an athlete or a coach, just based on your talent. You've got to use every bit of advantage around you to try and leverage that talent. In saying that, you can't make someone what they're not. Unless you've got this raw talent to start with, um, you're not going to get get there. But if you've got the talent, it hasn't got to be the best talent, you can certainly use technology and uh, sports science and all these things to really leverage your talent. And that's what I've seen. I've seen people definitely who are not the most talented people really go to the top of the tree and win Olympic gold medals and all sorts of things because they've used every bit of advantage to um, leverage their talent. And technology is top of the list. I mean, you, you know, quite quite simply, I, this goes back to my Xerox days. Whoever wins in IT tends to win. Nothing's changed in IT, meaning te technology. So, um, if you've got a real grasp of technology, and what I found in the so in the rugby world, so in the Olympic world, the, the real talented athletes they get totally involved in this. They are good with technology. They are good at analysing data because they can leverage their own talent to help to help help themselves. So. It's, it's huge, technology, you'll never win solely on technology, but if the, you combine the two, talent plus technology equals high performance. There you go.